Hello everyone, this is Dr. Murphy, and welcome back to our transplant series, Banff and Beyond. For our first case, the patient is a 45-year-old male, status post-transplant, approximately one year ago, found to have an elevated creatinine. First, this is a PAS stain section of the biopsy at medium power. One thing that catches your eye is a lymphoplasmocytic inflammation within the interstitium. Now, when evaluating interstitial inflammation within an area of unscarred cortex, the scores are as follows. I0 less than 10%. I1 10 to 25%, I2 26 to 50%, and I3 greater than 50% within the non-scarred cortex. Now there is a category of chronic active T-cell media rejection, which is somewhat controversial, and we will touch on this later in the series. Here, there is inflammation within an area of unscarred cortex, and when seeing the whole biopsy comprised approximately 15% of the sample, meeting criteria for a score of I1. Now, in this picture, as we look at higher magnification, we can see we have three tubules within the image, which importantly do not show severe tubular atrophy, which Banff characterizes as less than 25% of an unaffected tubule, one with pronounced tubular basement membrane wrinkling, or endocrine-type atrophy. As we can see here in the picture, we have mild lymphocytic tubulitis, and here within tubules that do not show significant atrophy, warranting a score of T1, as well as in this field, we have tubulitis here and here. Thus, with an I1, T1, we have met criteria for borderline T-cell media rejection. Borderline criteria also includes I1 with T1 to T3, or T1 with I2 to I3. Additionally, BAMF still allows for the diagnosis of borderline with T greater than 0 and I1 as allowed in prior iterations of the criteria. However, this must be stipulated in the report. Most pathologists like to retain the criteria of an I1 to make the diagnosis. Now what to do with a borderline diagnosis? Well, that is difficult to answer, and it seems some nephrologists treat it while others keep a watchful eye, as evidence for either decision is rooted in the patient's clinical picture. Thank you for your time, and stay tuned for the next episode.